Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me again on the Word Podcast. We continue with our examination of the book of Ephesians. We're in the fourth chapter, and we're actually down to the 24th verse. And so let me just encourage you that if you're just sort of jumping in with us right now, first of all, welcome. And But go back and catch the previous three, four episodes before this, because the first word of the 24th verse is the, uh, I think the 24th verse, isn't it? Is the word, therefore. Okay, therefore. So it's, oh, it's actually the 25th verse. There we go. It's uh, the word therefore. So when you see that word therefore, what do you do? Well, you know it's a term of conclusion. You know something's being brought forth. Uh, the cute little adage is quite appropriate. You look to see what it is there for, <laughs> right? <laughs> so anyway, in light of what we've seen in the fourth chapter up this point in time, in light of what we've seen in this letter up this point in time, uh, the Spirit is leading Paul to give some very directed uh, instructions, commandments, insights. So verse 25 of Ephesians 4, here we go, <laughs> says, Therefore, laying aside falsehood, speak truth, each one of you with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. So there's going to be several things that he tells us in each one of these verses. And so what's he saying? The first thing he says is, lay aside falsehood, Okay. Just put it aside. Put aside the lie. King James says, wherefore, put in away lying. Okay? So he says, quit lying to one another. And you think, well, you know, we as believers don't lie. Oh, yes, we do, folks. I mean, we do so day in and day out. And quite often we think that we're doing it to the benefit of the other. And that's something we're going to see right here. It's really, really showing us how to live out the life of the body of Christ with one another. That we lay aside falsehoods. Uh, sometimes we take it just so, um, uh, it's just sort of a natural pattern of life. Uh, I was talking with somebody about this just a few days ago. Um, if, you're, uh, if you live where we're from, uh, you probably grew up or you're aware of the uh, Andy Griffith show, the Mayberry show, right? And there were all these just hilarious episodes. I mean, it's just a great, great, great TV program. But I remember uh, even as a kid, it used to bother me about how they would lie, particularly to Barney. They would lie to him and lie about him in the attempt to make him feel better. And to make him feel better. And so many of the uh, episodes had that as sort of an undercurrent that they would not tell the truth. Now, I'm not talking about, and we'll see this later on in this passage, I'm not talking about bludgeoning somebody with the truth, okay? Beating somebody up with the truth. No, no, no. As a matter of fact, we're going to see that we speak the truth in love, okay? But we get so caught up in doing things, uh, in a way that we think, oh, well, I don't want to hurt their feeling, so I'm going to tell a little white lie. You know, that type of thing. No, we simply don't do that. Now, there are malicious things, okay? And there are things that we deal with day in and day out. And some of them are quite frustrating. I know. Uh, for instance, there, there are people in my life that I know, they'll sit there and say, oh, yeah, I'll take care of that. And I know it's not going to happen. Okay? I know it's not going to happen. And I know it because of experience with them. Okay? Okay? That they've just flat out lied to me. In their mind, they probably really intend to do it. Okay? I'll give them a benefit of the doubt. They probably really intend to do it. But they have no intention <laughs> to do it because they don't do anything to do it. Uh, and sometimes it's just a flat out weird, folks. I mean, I've got, there's a couple that, you know, uh, that I'm sort of forced into day in and day out type of relationships with. And you just know that that what's being spoken is a falsehood, okay? And he's saying this, he said, lay this aside. Now, there's some uh, really sort of exciting hope here in the midst of this. Uh, these are not new issues. It's here in the scripture, folks, from 2,000 years ago. These are the things that are a um, requirement of uh, to being transformed, okay? And if we are realizing it, wait a minute, I may have a tendency to default to a falsehood. I may have a tendency to default to a lie 
even when I, I'm doing it to make somebody feel better, or a lot of times it's just in conversation. Somebody will share something with you and somebody says, oh yeah, I knew that, I knew that. Well, you didn't know that. You didn't know that. Or some of my favorite ones that I encounter all the time is somebody said, well, yeah, I was about to say that. I was about to say that. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. That's that's literally flippantly sort of become uh, a thing where you're confirming what they're saying, but you're confirming what they're saying by falsely building yourself up. And this becomes a pattern of life. I see it a lot in church leadership, folks. I see that a lot. And so anyway, he's saying, you know, quit that kind of stuff. Remember what he said earlier in the previous verses? He said, die to self, <laughs> you know, and be renewed in your spirit and put on the new self. This is the part of dying to self. Lay aside those falsehoods. But not only lay aside the falsehood, speak the truth, each one of you, with his neighbors, for we are members of one another. So he's talking about the body of Christ. Remember the whole context of this fourth chapter, how we are one. You know, speak the truth. Now, again, that doesn't mean that you that we have uh, authority to come along and beat somebody up with the truth. You know, you speak the truth in love. You encourage people. You draw people in with love. You are patient with one another. We're forbearing with one another. So if someone is speak, sitting in there speaking a falsehood, you try to draw them into the conversation where they realize it. You don't sit there and say, hey, you're a liar. <laughs> no, there may be times you feel like saying that. There may actually be a time where you need to say that. Okay, But even in saying that, you do it in love. But I think a real uh, uh, important thing that we do is that we lead by example with that. Okay, we lead by example. That we speak the truth. Well, what is the truth? Well, to start with, the truth is the, the mind of the Most High God. Okay, The truth is the Word of God. The truth is what is the reality of a matter or a situation. Okay? And so we speak that truth with one another. Then there's also the thing of uh, sort of the corollary to this and what this is founded upon. No, you don't lie to your neighbor. You don't lie to one another. Remember, that's what he said at the very beginning, that you lay aside the falsehood. Okay? You don't lie to one another. You don't do this. You don't deceive one another. If you're not at freedom to say what something is, then don't say it. Okay? Uh, <laughs> If you've got one of those things that's brought to you, you go, oh, Lord, help me. What to do? You know, the classic thing of, of the husband with the wife, and the wife comes to him and says, does this dress make me look fat? <laughs> you think, oh, you know, what do you do? You know, God will quite often give you answers to that. I'll give you one from my own life, okay? So years and years ago, we moved back to where I was uh, born and raised. And I'd been gone a couple of decades. And I would encounter people from time to time that I grew up with, and I'll, it was more from time to time. I mean, a lot of times, somebody would just come up, and they say, Hey, uh, do you remember me? Well, you know, that's a tough question. You know, don't, you know, all of us can say this. Don't come to me 35 years later and 50 pounds later and say, Hey, do you remember me? I may or I may not, but I'm just one of those guys that's definitely probably not. You know? And so fi- I guess finally I said, Lord, you've got to give me something to say to this because, I, I, you know, it's, they, they have actually created an awkward moment, okay, which is really a teaching moment for us. And that's the reason usually if I call you or send you an email or something like that, I'll say, hey, this is Dale. I even do it with my mom. I'll say, hey, this is Dale. <laughs> You know, I just don't want to assume that you're going to know who my voice is on the phone or, or this or that. And so God actually gave me a little line for that. So somebody says, uh, well, do you remember who I am? I say, well, tell me who you are and I'll let you know. <laughs> you know, sort of a, 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 a jovial kind of thing that you know, I really don't remember who you are. But if you tell me who you are and every time they've told me who they are, of course, I remember who you are. I haven't seen you in 30 years, but yes, I remember yeah, it's so good to see you. You know, that kind of thing. I think the Lord will give us things to speak forth the truth with our neighbors. And then the, the final thing, and our, our time is way past here nearly. Why do we do this? Because, folks, we are all members of one another. We're members of one another, and we want what is best for one another. So what is best? Lay aside the falsehood. Don't lie. Speak forth the truth. Well, again, I'm Dale. I'll see you all again next time. Goodbye.